This is a podcast from the Queen City Podcast Network. Welcome to Nerd School. Nerd! 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 Yeah. Suck it, nerd! 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 Uh. Me, daddy ass. Nerd, nerd, nerd. Welcome to Nerd School. My name is Loki. Welcome to the Nerd School podcast. You jack. When last we left off in Avengers Endgame, folks, uh, it was gonna it jumped the film jumps five years. Oh, we got to the five year jump. Okay, we just got to that beginning five year jump, which. We got we got a lot of shit. So uh, Art and I and probably TBJ got some shit from a gentleman named Hunter, uh, uh-huh. Hunter Brame. I don't know if that's how you say it. He gave us a lot of shit for taking forty five minutes of. <laughs> but he also intense. must be new to this because we never get to the point, <laughs> and we are yeah. never a quick podcast. Well, I did tell them. I did tell them that maybe, hopefully, we'll get through most of it. Since this would be, this is our 99th episode. Oh my God. And we are jumping right in. We're already in the movie. We didn't do 45 minutes of nerd banter. And I told him, I, is, but him, I also feel like we have a hard out also. Yes. So we'll see what we can do. Well, I told him to embrace the tangent. We embrace the tangent as long as it's a nerd tangent. I told him I'll edit. We do. Out it is who we are. It is who we are. Yeah. And that's what people listen to podcasts for is people that listen to podcasts about nerd stuff want to hear blather about nerd stuff. <laughs> I uh, assume. Except apparently Hunter. Except Hunter. <laughs> uh, but hey, I listen to some of his favorite podcasts about air traffic controllers and um, we're still better. We're better. Anyway, five years in the future and Steve. Rogers is running a support group for people who survived the snap. And Clint has become a vigilante, brutally killing gang leaders across the world. And Natasha runs what's left of the Avengers, including War Machine, Captain Marvel, Nebula, Rocket, and Okoye. Uh, according to this uh, synopsis that I got off on online. So according to what we see when they have a meeting. Yeah, and when we see that, yeah. Captain Marvel explains that she's going to go back into deep space and will therefore be out of contact. Um, oh, uh, just a, a note. Yeah. Uh, there Just a, a thing that happened. That support group. Yeah. I think there's something uh, about that. That support right? group, one of the directors, one of the Russo brothers is in that support group. He's telling the story about being on the date. Really? Yeah. And uh, I remember there was some talk of uh i think they had said hey that we have our first uh i guess openly gay marvel character in this movie and that's him yeah yeah because he was talking about dating a guy i remember that but that's one of the russo brothers yeah and uh, i can't remember which i think it's joe russo i have to look at their pictures but um but it was a little like oh this this guy that speaks for 30 seconds <laughs> is yeah. your big uh thing are the russo know. brothers gay do we know or do uh i do not believe so okay not that you have to be gay to play gay but mm-hmm. uh he then he uh, essentially displaced the gay actor great job sorry <laughs> no i like that i like that coming for the russo brother yeah i'm coming for him they're canceled uh maybe they already are they they quit that marvel uh they haven't done a marvel movie since this movie okay I mean, they done. They did a uh, Winter Soldier. They did. Uh, so so this War. was their end game too. Yeah. That um, said, there's no reason like maybe they might come back at some point. But this was such a huge undertaking to do all these. Like they did Infinity War and this. I want to. Yeah, it's end a game. lot to have done in general, but this is not an easy. This is heavy. Uh, yeah. So you know, maybe they needed a break for their mental health. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, this, I like this support group thing. Again, Marvel does a great job of trying to come up with ways of uh, real, uh, not realizing, like, not, how, how would I say it? Like, just making it feel like real people are ex- yeah. in this world. Well, what would really happen if this really somehow happened? A snap and then come back. You would have support groups. You'd have, that's why I like on Falcon Winter Soldier, when you show him dealing with like 
bank accounts and like, I'm sorry, your credit's bad because five years he didn't do any, you know, I yeah. was in a fucking blip, man. You know, it's like these real things would happen. I don't know the beginning of the next movie we're going to jump into. I just started the far from home where, you know, kids grow up. My, my, my younger brother's now older than me. You know, some guy says, you know, it's like, oh, we haven't, we haven't undone the blip yet. We'll get to that. Yeah. So we'll get that into the outside of the blip, but I just like, this is what would happen. Like, people yeah, have I mean, I, on one people. hand, I'm thinking like it's been five years. I mean, yeah, it's, it's devastating. And, you know, half of the people in the entire world are gone, but everything still looks completely destroyed. And, uh, I've I don't know I feel like some people like the construction product projects might have be a little further along in five years yeah, but how long know. you know how long construction projects st- go like they haven't even started Spirit yeah, Square yet it's supposed to be done by well, they yeah. have half the workforce so maybe that's also it yeah, like, that's let's, true but... let's check this out though right if you think about it so like right now they're actually in 2023 supposedly right right now or in this movie in the movie yeah yeah in the movie so you also have i say like a couple of years from now you know it was when the other movies and shows like hawkeye um falcon and winter soldier you see like the world kind of recovered mm-hmm. but it's that one for me this it was weird because it almost gives it that like Dark Knight Rises kind of like Gotham feel, but then also like Armageddon has happened. So like this is what the end game. I, yeah, I guess like, now that I think about this it, is what the end game is. Yeah, I guess like things weren't destroyed; they were just not maintained because oh, right. like, there, yeah, there that's wasn't... the best way to think of it. Who's caring? Who's upkeeping? Yeah, I guess wherever they had battles okay. was destroyed. You know, but just, yeah, for, for but some it was di- like even when when Scott comes. And he's, you know, when he was walking down the street, what did he say? Like, hey, kid, what happened here? You know, because, like, he, it, it almost reminded me, like, of a, a scene from the movie Gummo, if you know what the movie Gummo is. But, like, it looks like rural Indiana where, like, there's no money being flung. Like, and this is what Scott's in San Francisco. San Francisco looks unlike San Francisco. But, yeah. 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 It's, uh, and I guess, like in Infinity War, like the only Earth battle, there was the bit in New York where they're embarrassing him in front of the wizards. There was the big attack in Wakanda. But like, uh, I don't think there was anything going on in the rest of the world. I'm just trying to put myself in that. Yeah. Like, think if you were to blip in 2018 and come back this year, like my kids, if I came back, my kids were still here. Like, I wouldn't recognize them. My yeah, they, daughter was nine, you know, now she's 14 in high school. My son's a, an adult delivering pizzas. Like, he was like <laughs> you were 12, you were a sixth grader or whatever. Yeah. And now you missed that whole thing. Yeah. And, and I feel like that is actuality. Sometimes I feel like there was a goddamn blip when I see pictures of them. I'm like, that's how I still see them. When did they? It's grow true. Up? They grow, and yeah, we've been living in our own blip, unbeknownst. We're being a parent. It's called yeah. working parent. It's a parent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the working parent blip. That's a big thing. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's. I just love how Marvel does a really good job of trying to make realism out of banana shenanigans. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's a word. Uh, things that are just crazy. Uh, Anyway, meanwhile, a rat runs across a control panel in a warehouse and a rat somehow activates a machine located in a van and the machine opens a vortex and Scott Lang, Ant-Man, emerges. I love how if that rat wasn't there, Ant-Man probably would have never come back. That's correct. That's crazy. Maybe he would have figured out, judging by what we see in Quantumania, he probably could have maybe found a way back eventually. So you think somebody found that van at the top of that building and just, just sitting of, there open, mm-hmm. you know, with the, nobody there? I'm like, well, I guess we need to. There's, they probably found that stuff everywhere. They probably there could be a whole movie just on people cleaning up the blip, you know, after the blip, like yeah, cars left abandoned, things crashed, things hanging, whatever. Yeah, that's true. Like everyone, like that that 
Nick Fury was watching the helicopter just suddenly just crash, crash into a building yeah. and stuff like that. So I yeah. guess maybe you know, like there was a whole lot of damage like that. There's Planes probably, probably crashed all over the place. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Think about all those things that probably yeah. happened. You could do just a movie or a show series just on the blip, you know? I feel like they almost did. Wasn't there some show like it was like the 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 it wasn't maybe it wasn't the rapture or maybe that's what it wound up being, but there was like the forty four hundred or something like that where like I think you're thinking of Mr. I know Bovary. what you're talking about. I can't remember the show though. Yeah, there was some show where just a shit ton of people just disappeared. Mr. Belvedere? Yeah, it was Mr. Belvedere. You know, one time they had to stop shooting Mr. Belvedere because Mr. Yeah. Belvedere accidentally sat on his balls <laughs> and they had to cancel shooting. Uh, Christopher Hewitt, you are remembered forever for sitting on your balls one time on the set of <laughs> Mr. Belvedere, and then they had to stop shooting for a couple of days. You know, Adam Sandler is the one who told that story. He was a special <laughs> guest on there, and his he got, I think, either delayed or cut because they had to delay shooting because he sat on his balls. Andy, just a note, not to <laughs> take away from your talk of balls, it's called The Leftovers, <laughs> the TV show you're talking about. The Leftovers? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'm so glad TBJ didn't want to take take away from our talk of balls. That's good. <laughs> Not to interrupt the ball talk, but that's anyway, good. Paul Rudd was stuck in the quantum realm, and it takes him a while to realize five years have passed. And I like how they did this, so they so that way the audience can kind of go through it with somebody who's also like, "What the fuck is happening?" And much of the world's been destroyed. And he runs to his home, finds his daughter who doesn't recognize him, is still alive, now played by a new actress. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I was wondering about this is it's been about five years, hasn't it? Since the last Ant-Man, like, couldn't the girl who played Cassie, isn't she five years older at this point? When this movie uh, comes out? Not when they filmed it. It's probably when they released it. It's a different thing. No, oh. the last Ant-Man was, was right before, was between Infinity War and Endgame. Oh, okay. Okay. And I accept your apology. Lost. Yeah, she wasn't tiny then. Okay. So they had a new girl playing her. Uh-huh. Uh, and after their reunion, Scott drives to Avengers headquarters where Steve is visiting Natasha. And at this point made me, I, I actually think when I watched this the second time, that peanut butter and jelly sandwich bit between Steve and Natasha, I went and made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Like they, <laughs> they made a peanut butter and jelly. So look so good. Oh, that product placement. It was yeah, so good. Jelly. Keep I want, in mind. Yeah. She didn't say anything about jelly. She just said a peanut butter sandwich. She said a peanut butter sandwich, but she has the jelly. Oh, did she? Her, you see okay. her putting the jelly on it. Uh, I see. Or the jelly. I think the jelly is what you. Was it or, not? God damn it. Is there a jar of jelly? I think it was strawberry jam, too. Oh, it was not Ganavian jelly. It might have been Ganavian <laughs> jelly. Yeah. <laughs> it probably was Ganavian. I jelly. had to get that out. Yeah. <laughs> second time. Sec- Could have been sec- goiter Second jelly. time to charm. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Paul Rudd, uh, who plays Ant-Man, uh, and is also in Clueless, explains that the quantum <laughs> realm allows individuals to travel through time, but that they need to build a device that allows them to control the time travel. If they can build such a device, then they can pull off a time heist where they can steal the can Infinity I, Stones before Thanos second? obtains them and fix can it. Can we pause for a yeah. second? I got to yeah. do this. Yeah. I love you, Joe. I time love heist. you, Joe. Yeah. And I know you're reading. Yeah. But it's like the fact that when you do these things, you yeah. say... Paul Rudd, who plays that man, <laughs> one is it's messing with your nerd cred a little bit. Yeah, it's not like we're teaching you, we're teaching you. So when you say Paul Rudd, who plays that man, it makes me makes people think someone may say, like, Hey, did Joe not know that Paul Rudd played that man in the other movies that they've been watching? <laughs> <laughs> but go on. I just had to do that. And Paul Rudd is oh, yeah. no relation to Dwayne Rudd, who played linebacker. It's it's a memorization technique. He has to just say it over and over. It's repetition to no, remember think it's just, that Paul Rudd plays Ant Man. Well, this thing I'm reading. Or, but here's another thing to note: he doesn't say the other people's real names when he says their characters. He goes, "This is who <laughs> Captain America was in the kitchen." He doesn't go, "Chris Evans in the kitchen." He only so does he it with Paul, love Rudd. with Paul Rudd. Well, if Paul Rudd is a beautiful man. The main reason is this: this yes. synopsis I'm reading from only has some of them in parentheses. It has. It has Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, but not 
Chris, I guess Chris Evans way at the beginning. I guess the first time that character is mentioned, it has them in parentheses. That's, yes, that's kind of standard stop. Yeah, so you are don't written. have to tell us. We know you can yeah. synopse it. I just keep saying, Paul, I just want an excuse to bring up Clueless because it's probably the greatest movie of all time. It's probably the ickiest movie of all it time. It is icky because she wants to bang her brother. Yeah, we talked about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, where am I at? Um, Stealing time. Oh yeah, the the time heist. I love all the jokes and stuff about Back to the Future. It's like, oh, what a Back to the Future's bullshit. <laughs> like he gets all pissed. Uh, like, even even Don che- even uh Rhodey yeah. is uh like what are your sources for this information about what you know about time travel? And he just <laughs> lists off a shit ton of movies. Bill and Ted's with, with, a, <laughs> with like like matter of fact, I know this. That's why obviously I love all these things are facts. Yeah. Uh, what are you- and I like that Rhodey is the one who suggests going back in time and murdering baby Thanos. Yeah. And, somebody uh, had to bring that up because that's the, that's the, the age old conversation when it comes to time travel. Everybody brings up, well, why don't you just go back and kill Hitler? And there's always some reason you can't do that. Like it's still, or it doesn't, you know, people argue like that wouldn't fix it. Yeah. Or what? You know, how could you kill a baby? You the know? butterfly effect. Yeah. And it's, and it's also back to the, that Tom Cruise uh, thing where it's like, you, you prevent a crime before it happens. Precognition. Yeah, you're killing somebody before they can commit a crime. What if in that reality, you, you know, what if that's, and that's reality, you know, that's the the Winter Soldier. The what was it? It was Civil War thing, wasn't it? No, yeah. Winter Soldier. When uh, like the whole Robert Redford plan was to murder a million people before they do anything, and yeah, because you know like, going to. I thought the punishment like, came after the crime. Yeah, you can't. But I like how yeah. also uh, this this gets into the how like the rules of time travel in the mcu are you can't go back in time and change anything right because uh and it took me a minute to listen to that explanation like, me too i had to listen to like four times when, yeah. hulk, when hulk's explaining it's like wait so wh- why isn't back to the future right he's like no because the second you go back you're not in that you're in a different timeline now you're like yeah, you're not in yeah. your timeline or else you couldn't be there because you wouldn't exist kind of thing. Like, so you're now not you, you're you from that reality you left and you're in the new reality. Mm -hmm. So they're really kind of explaining the whole multiverse and kind of how it works. I mean, as best Hulk knows, because then you get more into it with the Loki series and uh, all of that. Yeah. That gets more into it, but what Hulk's theory, I mean, yeah, Hulk doesn't even know he's right, but he's, that's what he's saying is right. Right. I mean, that's the one thing he's sure about. And by the way, Hulk is now smart Hulk. This yeah. is the first time we've seen that. Well, we How haven't seen him yet. At this point, we haven't seen him yet. Because we're, nope. get, we're getting to that. Okay, we haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, okay. Steve, Natasha, and Scott. Spoiler, Andy. Tony. Yeah, spoiler, Andy, you asshole. No wonder Hunter Brame hates your guts. Friend of the show. <laughs> Let's not spread rumors. Well, <laughs> well, you know. They could be enemies. I get that vibe that he hates my guts. <laughs> I would like to see a Hunter Brame. Nobody hates Andy. Andy. Uh, no. Hunter Brame and Josh Frank versus Andy and Art Star in a tag team match. All right, Steve, Natasha, and Scott <laughs> go to visit Tony Stark, played by uh, Anthony Michael Hall. Uh, he lives. <laughs> that would be Arthur. <laughs> no, it's another guy with three names: Robert Downey Jr. Uh, but I they think... were on Saturday Night Live together, and Weird Science. And I think everybody right. in Weird Science uses three names. Uh. What about the guy who plays Wyatt and uh, Kelly Joe LeBrock Stark. and uh, uh, Bill Paxton? Okay, I'm wrong. You're anyway, wrong. Tony's living a peaceful life, married to Pepper <laughs> Potts, played by Gwyneth Paltrow, who also sells candles that smell like a vagina. And, <laughs> and they you have need a young, to add that bit in. They have a young daughter. I, I just, I'm trying to help her sell some candles. Is all. Uh, she needs our help. I think she's financially just fine. You know what? I, I also realized TBJ might like this. She was in Glee. Uh, I'm aware of that. Yes, that my daughter's <laughs> been watching on repeat over and over and over, and uh, and I'll say Gwyneth Paltrow is like the first part of Glee that I've really uh kind of liked. I'm Let I'm warming up. Saying. Let me say something right now, right Uh-oh. right here. Yep, here so we go. On the last episode, <laughs> when we was talking about this, Joe. Yeah, I loved you, Joe. But you were sitting there talking about Glee. You were like, I don't think. Most of them, I don't think they're actually singing. I didn't think I they think were. Actually, I didn't. Right. 
I, and most and of I didn't think cast, they were in Pitch Perfect either, but now I'm knowing they are. Yeah. Because I yeah. could tell that was Gwyneth Paltrow singing when I heard her sing on there. I was like, oh, that's Gwyneth Paltrow. Then you haven't. Like, there are a few breakout stars from Glee who are exactly. on Broadway killing it. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i out of touch with reality. <laughs> are, are you also aware that one time Gwyneth Paltrow was in a movie where Huey Lewis played her dad? That's what I, that's what I told my daughter. And she, she was like, who's Huey Lewis? And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> so she keeps living on the streets. Uh, because if you don't no, know, who she, you, I, she should be listening to uh, sports on. Repeat. If you don't know who you, who Huey Lewis is, you're not welcome in my home. I don't know who that is. So what? Huey Lewis in the news. Uh, if you say the whole thing, but I, if I this know is it, fan, but I don't who, know I, Please let me know. I want, I want a, a new, new drug. drug. I knew you were gonna say that one. Working for a living. Well, Working. he sings the Back to the Future things. Yeah, the power go of love. Back that would be the only thing I know. Gonna go back in time. Ah, love. No, he's not uh, great, but he's uh hip to be square. Yeah, dun, it's, okay, it's really kind of lame. Game. I know that song. Who no, he's square? Kind of lame, if, lame. It's white hip guy. to be square. Yeah. So if he's lame, that means he's hip. Yeah, that's just something we grew up. Doing it all for my baby. Nobody really likes Huey Lewis that much. <laughs> I don't. Think. I know people who like Huey Lewis. Yeah, uh, you're a Huey Lewis. Anyway. Uh, everybody has a fandom everybody has a so fandom back to They're Gwyneth fans. Paltrow who was in a karaoke movie uh, with he was and that, that, along the lines of did anyone really like Huey Lewis <laughs> he was playing he was in that movie as a karaoke hustler like somehow yeah. he would he would get yeah. people to bet that he wasn't <laughs> good at karaoke and then he'd go up and yeah. sing like Huey Lewis and everyone is supposed to be blown away. And, but like, Huey oh Lewis can't really sing that well. Yeah, who grew yeah, like, that like movie? that's not the kind of voice you have if you're <laughs> blowing people away at karaoke. I can I, sing Huey Lewis songs. Yeah, Huey Lewis is fine. I mean, he's the the music is 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 what it is and it's fine, but it's not blow your mind at a karaoke bar, karaoke hustler. Oh, you're my They did have a couple of barbershop type quartet songs. But the, but poor Huey Lewis is lost. Yeah. He's like he's got a throat issue. I think his voice no, is his, his hearing is he can't oh, his hear hearing. It's his hearing. Okay. Yeah. Oh well. Anyway. He's uh, good. I enjoy his music. However, it, it's not uh Jennifer Hudson. So it's here's the thing. thing. Tony and Pepper are super happy. They have the life they've always wanted. Tony's been able to stop all the you know Can I action, just know action hero stuff. Yeah. And they have a kid. Yes. No to no to way. I don't love them as a couple, and I I feel like I've said this a long time ago. I just don't love it, and I just want that to be known. I well, will uh, so note that in the comic books, uh, they, they are not. It. They are She's not with in the comic. Books. She's with Happy, Happy right? Hogan. Yeah. So or should, they were married. I don't know if they're still them, all on May's tip. So is she? Spoiler. Is she still like the CEO of his company and everything in the comics? Uh, she was she like, like basically ran things for him. While he was out superheroing and uh, yeah, Howard Hughesing and stuff. So TBJ, do but you? But does not- it not feel off when they're on screen together? Like there are couples on screen where you feel chemistry, and I yeah. never feel it with those two. I can never believe it, and so every time they're in a scene together, I just can never believe she's more than his assistant. Who cares? Yeah, do you think it's the act- even at actors? the spoiler part of it? Even doing the spoiler part of it. There is a brief moment, but we get them as a couple in more than one movie, in more than one scene, and I just have a hard time with it. That's all. I'm just making it known. I'm just. Are you, I mean, they're, they're. Yeah, I mean, I can see where you're coming from. Hulk and it, Natasha had better chemistry. Okay, guys. They have really good <laughs> chemistry, though. I think Chris Evans and Natasha had good better chemistry. Everybody, but Natasha you, had better do chemistry. You, <laughs> do you think it's just because they got together and not because it's that? Is there more chemistry when they can't be together? They want to be together, but they can't find a way. I like no, I, I, I. Part of me want, is wonders if it's the actors. Yeah, they don't have. Chemistry I, it might maybe. be the characters because, like, genuine warmth is not what you really get out of Tony Stark. I mean, it's there. That is very true. But it's in layers of sarcasm and deflection and all that shit. So it, it's. I mean, they're if you can get into his mindset and how he works. I feel like I see it when he's away, right? Before we get, before he gets back and he's floating around and he's sending her letters, I feel mm-hmm. like he misses her. When they're in the room together, yeah. it never yeah. feels right. I think I'm with you on that because like, I feel it more like you said when he's talking to the helmet. <laughs> but then when he's with her, I'm like, 
Yeah, I guess but we so. also don't see a lot of their just their alone time together. Yeah, we just see him with the little girl now. It's like know? them like goofing around, joking with each other, and then Agent Coulson shows up and says, "Let's be Avengers or whatever." Or uh, there's there's always something else going on. You don't just kind of see them hanging out and actually being functional. It's yeah. We, but I feel, we see them when they're butting heads a lot. That with we don't see that with the other couples, and we don't feel icky when they're in the room together. I when Hawkeye's in the room with his wife, you can feel the love. Yeah. When Hulk and Tasha are in the room together, you can feel the tension. When Natasha's in the room with anyone, you can feel the tension. <laughs> you can't. But when we don't get a whole backstory of all of them, but you can feel it and have a sense of it. You just don't when they're in the room together. Again, when they're not together in the room, you feel it. Maybe it's because you just want her to be the Jack Black from that movie where she wears the no. shell how. Is that what I want her to yeah. be? The shell how? Yeah. Anyway, Tony says, nope, I'm not helping you motherfuckers. I'm happy. I've got everything I need. I'm, I am got too much to lose. Uh, the world's fucked. Uh, but then they visit those three go and visit Bruce. And this is when we see He's perfected Hulk. He's the smart Hulk. And now he's always in Hulk form, but he maintains Bruce's intelligence. Um, Mm -hmm. Even wears his shirts. Uh, Hulk agrees to help. So this is a whole bit is funny with at the restaurant when he's like taking (laughs) selfies with people and everything. And the whole bit with him, and Ant-Man is funny. Uh, You want a picture with me? Uh, Oh no, you don't. Who am I? I'm I'm (laughs) Ant-Man. Uh, take a picture with him. You know, that whole bit is funny. <laughs> really awkward. Uh, so it's just really, I don't know. Hulk's really likable, of course. Because um, mm-hmm. it's basically Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. He's green. Yeah. yeah. And large. Uh, Which is why people have wanted a whole movie where it's Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk. And we've yeah, got. That's true. Still haven't got that, it. have we? Although there is a strain of people like, because apparently this wasn't the original Hulk plot line. Because th- there's a bit in the first trailer for Infinity War where the Hulk is uh, with them in Wakanda when they're facing off uh, against uh, the Thanos' hordes mm-hmm. that never made it to the film. And since they went this route with it, and there's there are some nerds out there who are not... I mean, even though Smart Hulk is definitely a, a thing from the comics, uh, they're... I think they're a little pissed that Hulk never really gets his rematch with Thanos, I guess, after getting punked so early in the middle of at the beginning of Infinity War. Yeah. Because uh, the Hulk, when he's supposed to be like the strongest thing going and uh, the strongest one there is, he always says, and the matter he gets, the stronger he gets. So I think there's some Hulk nerds who are like, eh. He should have kicked his ass or something. But then are the you Russos, are I you think, that Hulk nerd, Andy? No, I like oh. that Smart Hulk is there. Uh, I would have liked to see him kick a little bit more ass in the final thing, but uh, it's um, and Smart Hulk is. But he he did he brought everybody back eventually. Spoiler and from the comics, Hulk Smart Hulk. Yeah, there was a, a whole period of time like throughout uh, the nineties through the Peter David run of the Incredible Hulk where. Uh, which is he did he was on the Hulk for like twelve years or something like that. And yeah. uh, it was it was all about his fractured uh psyche. There was different aspects of his personality that were at war with each other. And he kind of explains it. He just he put the brains in the brawn, but that in the comics there's like a third uh aspect, the sort of like the id, the ego and the super ego uh triumvirate. The third guy is like the gray hulk, which is how we started off. And uh, so he's he like splits the difference, like he's not as smart as Bruce, he's not as strong as the green guy, but he's all about he's a lot more nasty and cunning and and mean. <laughs> so eventually he merges them all together, and they're a smart Hulk for a while, and until I think they figure out oh there's even more than those three personalities. Bruce Banner's fucked up, <laughs> mm. which is, they kind of address. Uh, I mean, well this. Is you haven't watched She Hulk, but they there's a sort of a hint of that in how She Hulk responds to becoming a Hulk as opposed to how he did because he's like coaching her, like, Oh, you're gonna hear these angry voices in your head telling yeah, you yeah. to do stuff. I and did see like, that part, yeah. No, no, I'm I'm fine. It's like, What? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> so now I know it's all him just being fucked yeah. up. Hulk mm-hmm. agrees to help, but it's clear he can't pull it off during their test, they only succeed in changing. Test subject, Ant-Man's age from infant to senior citizen and back again. 
Uh, which is another funny bit. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, one of us shit my pants. <laughs> uh, Pete, I think he peed. His pants. I think he shit his pants. Did he say Pete? One I think he said pee my pants. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, know if it was baby me or old me. <laughs> yeah, that whole thing was a funny bit too. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, Tony came time back- travel, and then Hulk is like, "I see this as an absolute win," and everyone else is like, "Well, we fucked that up." Yeah, that was great. Uh, meanwhile, Tony can't get the idea of time travel out of his head. Now, working through the night, he's able to develop a time travel device, and he hesitates to use it, not wanting to jeopardize the life he has despite knowing that others have suffered immensely. If only TBJ would have showed up and just said, hey, look, you and Pepper, it's not really believable, so just go ahead and... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would have helped him. Um, get away from him. Uh, no, 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 no. We're not doing this. Well, I wouldn't break them up now. They have a kid. Yeah, that's true. I would have intervened when she was getting married to him. I'm like, girl, are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> what, if she was, what if she was already pregnant, though, before she was getting married to him? What if... That was what it gets complicated. It gets complicated. Eventually, Pepper convinces him to bring the device to the Avengers, and he does so, but tells Steve they need to find a way to bring everyone back while not changing anything that happened in the last five years. And this is a bit I like uh, A, that like they're just hanging outside, and suddenly this dude in a sports car comes peeling all around. Like they they have this long shot of that sports car. Like that's a standard Tony Stark thing because remember, he braces cars all the time. Yeah. But also the that's when he has the talk with Steve, that's him finally uh unclenching about the civil war. Right. Yeah. And uh saying uh, there's a point and, and in his whole address that he just turns out, you know, resentment is corrosive and I hate it. Yeah. So that's it. <laughs> that's totally, how yeah. they bury the hatchet there. Totally, yeah. A lot of guys do it that way, I think. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know, maybe they don't. I don't know. What do I know? The Avengers decided to uh decide to recruit the rest of their team. Black Widow locates Hawkeye and convinces him that he can redeem himself and have his family back. Because Hulk... this, this is where we see what he's been doing. This is where we find going out a murder. Kill crazy everybody. rampage on all, on like the Yakuza. Yeah. And, uh, and he's been slaughtering people, uh, bad people, I guess. But nonetheless, he's just killing shit with swords. Yeah. Murder a hell out of people. And so Black but I was trying to return the favor because I want to ask Joe, do you still still think he sucks with his sword? Uh, uh, let's just say I was disappointed when I got that guy was killing everybody. And they take his mask off and dip shit. <laughs> I think you just hate him. Not the, the sword maybe, action. maybe, I don't know. I, I want to like him because I like his wife. Cause she was in uh freaks and geeks and uh, Hulk and rocket find Thor who has established a settlement called New Asgard because remember Asgard is not a ass place; it's an ass it's people. An ass people. <laughs> and so the New Asgard is populated by Asgardians, including Valkyrie, 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 Valkyrie. yeah, uh, Tessa Thompson. See, that's yep. why because the first time we bring her up, who uh, I love, Tessa Thompson. She's been in charge of everybody and everything. She explains that Thor has become a recluse in the years since the snap, having lost Mjolnir. Or meow meow and failed to beat Thanos. Uh, oh yeah, this is when we get to see Fat Fat Thor. They call him. Yeah, uh, Fat Drunk Thor, who sits and uh, yells at people, yells at Noob Master sixty nine <laughs> over yeah. uh, the Xbox headset that Korg is playing. Yeah, with. Korg Korg playing video games is the best part of this whole movie. <laughs> I love Korg. <laughs> oh my god, I love that guy. Uh, the duo goes to Thor's house and we find him drunk, unkempt, and extremely fat. I wouldn't say extremely fat. Um, but he, he looks only, like melted ice cream. Yeah, well, compared to according to Rocket, the what? What's his name? Usually looks like Chris um, Hemsworth. 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 Don't only, pretend you forgot a Hemsworth name. Have well, you seen TBJ? Have you seen the back and forth between Hemsworth and Momoa on on an in internet on the internet? No, uh, but maybe are maybe. they fighting? Well, no. What happens is um, Jason Momoa is in his Aquaman suit and he's flexing, and he's like. Check that out, Hemsworth. Check that out. <laughs> and he was like, Aquaman loves you. And then that's when uh, Chris Hemsworth didn't do the same thing, but he doesn't have a shirt on, and he's just flexing. And he was like, yeah, nice padded suit. <laughs> he's like just flexing his muscles, like grow love on a muscular uh, level. I need to <laughs> go look this up now. <laughs> <laughs> uh 
But anyway, he's playing video games with Korg. Oh, I didn't know who did Korg's voice. Do you guys know? Yes. Taika Waititi, oh. director of uh, Thor Ragnarok. Everybody knows that. Is that like a commonly known thing by everybody? Yeah. Oh, okay. Except uh, for you, Joe. Yeah. I'm just learning. I'm just learning his name. I know he directed one of the movies we've done or a couple. He's movies. also great in Our Flag Means Death. I heard he's directing a Star Wars thing coming up. Is that right, Art Star? Yeah, he's supposed to be doing Star Wars. Do you know what oh, he's doing? Is it a show or a movie? Or do you know? I think it's a movie. Is it about you? Uh, nah. Or not yet. Just not, not share yet. that information. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. And Meek is there too, and they eventually convince Thor to return by promising him lots of beer. <laughs> I love that. I've actually, I think, every time he's got a new beer in this one, I pause the and take a picture of the can and try to find out what brewery it's from and everything. And so, because uh, <laughs> they're real beers, like uh, Tony and Bruce successfully send Clint back in time for a few moments. And no time that way they know they're able to time travel. Uh, yeah, Huey Lewis style. And they split into teams to go after the Infinity Stones. And the teams I, all I, have these. I know, I love this whole sequence of them just figuring out what they know, <laughs> and just yeah, and it's like a way to recap everything, all, yeah, all sorts the movies. of shit, and yeah. and like seeing how other characters react to the shit that happened in other people's movies. Yeah, uh, it's. You mean the uh, bits where they're like studying and thinking and trying? Yeah, to like where okay, the... where where is this? Where was that? Yeah, and like the calling up Thor, it's like it's not really a stone; it's more of an angry sludge. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that whole bit is fun. Them just... that's that's just like me loving character interaction and yeah. just uh, the the realism, like you were saying before, of of what you have to do to figure out what what the well, hell yeah. your mission is they're laying around in a big mess eating pizza eating you know chinese food you know mm-hmm. they're all like uh, what hulk's eating that hulk uh ice cream i think from ben and jerry's <laughs> yeah you know, i think they uh, all of the hulka hulka burning fudge yeah hulka, hulka, burn, hulka, hulka, burn, <laughs> yeah all the little like throwback stuff and the little mm-hmm. you know it's just them just being people is always fun moments in these movies mm-hmm. um Anyway, so they split the teams to go after Infinity Stones. Cap, Iron Man, Hulk, and Ant Man will go back to the events in Avengers when three of the stones, time, mind, and space, were in New York. And that's where, yeah, because uh, Natasha figures that out. Hey, if we go the right time, all three of them are in New York. Thor and Rocket travel to Asgard during the events of Thor 2 to retrieve the reality stone. Black Widow and Hawkeye go to the planet where the Soul Stone is located, as shown in Avengers of fin- Infinity War. Mm. Uh, and that's one where, you know, it's War, is it Warmere? Where they figure Warmere, yeah. Somebody's got to kill them. And like, no, it, the apparently no one is aware of what actually you need to do until you at get Warmere, there. Because only Thanos and Gamora knows. But I think Nebula has a good idea. <laughs> yeah, but they never came. Yeah, because nobody comes back from there except yeah. Thanos or has come back. Um, and it's a ghost. And of there's, I, just, I saw something recently where, where, like, I hadn't noticed this about the line is like because they all travel to the like Morag, and then Nebula sends Clinton Natasha off on a spaceship, three plots the coordinates to send them to Vormir. Uh-huh. And, uh, and, and she says, There it's all said, all they have to do is not fall out. And that line is because because Nebula kind of knows what happens because Thanos yeah. went to Vormir and came back without Gamora, right? And that that's like a double meaning line. Like they have to not get fall out and start hating each other. They, they need to not well, fall uh, out. That's why that, it was a bad idea. Well, only Nebula would have been able to say this, but they shouldn't have sent those two together because they care about each other. One of that's the only kill. reason no one else loved each other. And you yeah. have to lose that which you love. So if oh, you so don't nobody have else that which could, you love with you, nobody else yeah. could get the stone. So I'm betting Nebula kind of knew that. Because if if Hawkeye's family was still alive, that's what he loves the most. So mm-hmm. they would have had to kill them in order for him to get the stone. And then she cares about Hawkeye Except the most. Natasha is part of his family. Yeah, but Natasha. Yeah, I mean they're she loves the Hulk. Yeah. They're like him. siblings. They, well, they don't yeah, have to kill she... his family. He just has to die. Knowing that he he'd be giving up his life, you know, and his family, knowing he has the family still there, you have to live, lose what you love, right? Yeah, 
to yeah, to, that's that's the sacrifice to and get the thing. Yeah. So, yeah, the Natasha and the Hulk are have not been a thing since uh, Age of Ultron, and they were barely a thing then. But, uh, but this, now they just have a couple of awkward moments. In there. Yeah, there's some chemistry. Here, here, here's something that could have been kind of like a hmm, does he? If Hulk did go, now it's like you know jumping and not turning into like let's say if he was brutes jumping and not turning into the hawk knowing that if he turned into the hawk he could save himself but then it's almost like the fact that he didn't turn in to the hawk kind of sort of meant he loves hawk does that make any sense because he's uh, always had that internal struggle right which is what he kind of overcame by becoming smart hawk but mm-hmm. it's still like it's always that demon that lives inside of him kind of thing, which is kind of like how you was alluding to the whole She-Hulk thing. Like, there's, like, you know, a Hulk has always been, like, banner puny, blah, blah, blah. But, mm-hmm. you know, they kind of needed each other. Yeah. So there, there, there is that love there. So, I mean, eh, you know. Yeah, like he, you know. like, he said at the beginning, like, I've always viewed the Hulk as a problem to get rid of, but instead I sort of embraced it and then they kind of uh started getting along i guess and and i it took him years in the lab too or mm-hmm. i guess but or 18 months or whatever he said how many how much time he had to spend in the lab figuring out how to do that so i guess there's a scientific aspect as well but yeah uh that's a healthy hulk and nebula and war machine travel back to the events of guardians of the galaxy to get the power stone and each person has enough power to make two time jumps, one to the past and one back to the present. Uh, the machines are powered by Pym particles created by Hank Pym, uh, played by Michael Douglas. Uh, yeah, de-aged Michael Douglas. A de-aged, yes. And um, with, a, with a wig on, <laughs> of yeah. long hair, Michael Douglas days. And he was killed in a snap. Uh, thus, no more Pym particles can be made. So they had to go back and steal them uh yeah but, with his yeah. long hair his long haired wig is kind we're of not funny. we're not there yet yeah, That's, yeah. we'll get we to that. first, yeah yeah so these stories are intercut let's discuss them in related chunks here as the according to this synopsis uh so there's big chunks of what this this person is kind of doing so thor and rocket on asgard the reality stone has merged with thor's then girlfriend jane foster natalie portman uh yes and just yeah and I, I, yeah. I, I love this whole bit because this is like where we get into the meat of Thor's PTSD. Yeah. Because we saw in Infinity War, he was like, after the events of his movies, his mom was killed, his father's dead, his sister murdered everybody that he, uh, the Warriors Three and everybody he cared about. Like, mm-hmm. uh, it's, and so many people died because he couldn't stop them. And he did his damn best and figured out he doesn't need Mjolnir to do everything. And he still lost and just destroyed the whole Asgard. Uh, you know, Loki's Loki. <laughs> uh, and, you know, Heimdall got killed in Infinity War. So, like, he's lost a lot. And he's also got the, he's shouldering the blame. He went through all that shit, like the heart of the dying star and shit to get Stormbreaker. And he didn't go for the head. So like he had the chance he could have stopped it all and he didn't. And so he is at a complete fucked up broken point. And this is where it all kind of comes to a head because he has to face his mother again. Yeah. And And I love this because Rene Russo didn't, his mother didn't get enough. She didn't. uh, She didn't get much. Rene Russo is a good actress. So she doesn't get much. It's a fantastic actress. Yeah. Much Mm -hmm. time. And she finally gets at least a moment in the, in this whole thing. I think people forget Rene Russo was even in this uh, whole thing. So, but I love rockets. I've got rockets quote highlighted here uh, where he kind of gets him through it and says, you think you're the only one that lost people? What do you think we're doing here? I lost the only family I ever had. Quill, Groot, Drax, the chick with the antenna, all gone. <laughs> <laughs> he says, now I get that yeah, you miss your mom, but she's gone, really gone. And there are plenty of people who are only kind of gone, and you can help them. So is it too much to ask that you brush the crumbs out of your beard, make Smoopy talk to pretty pants, and when she's not looking, <laughs> suck out the Infinity Stone and help me get my family back? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a good line. That was great. Uh, uh, Smoopy talk to pretty pants is my favorite. A, can you imagine, like, I guess Bradley Cooper when he's doing these lines? 
Like oh, him yeah. saying that. I always forget that's him. That's not him. Like uh, the guy who did did the physicality of Rocket was uh, uh, James Gunn's right, brother, but Sean Gunn. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but he's still, reading it. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still it's you're still looking at Bradley Cooper as Rocket say the lines. Yeah, like that wasn't much physicality other than him being in his face. Yeah. But it's still like having to visually visualize Bradley Cooper saying these things to Chris Hemsworth. I always forget that it's Bradley Cooper. Uh, so I'm mm-hmm. glad you said that because I'm going to think about that next time. I think because I'm, yeah, I'm like, it's, yeah. And I just I just flash back to Guardians Two where uh, is Bradley Cooper doing Rocket Raccoon doing a bad impression of Taserface, mocking him <laughs> for yeah. having a name Taserface. Yeah, Taserface. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if there's an action figure of Taserface. I'm sure there is. I bet there is. Anyway, Rocket goes to draw. Uh, draw it out from her while Thor ditches him uh, to follow his mother, Frigga, Rene Russo, who dies the next day. And she eventually spots Thor and deduces that he's from the future. She, like, right away knows, oh, you're um, time traveling. Because she's uh, raised by witches. Yeah, that's true. Uh, she consoles him, tells him he should be the hero he's meant to be instead of following the, the destiny his father wanted and eventually gets him to shape up. Thor summons Meow Meow, which was not yet destroyed. So meow this this uh reality's meow meow is sent to him. Yeah, he and rocks it out of there. And that's one of the things at the So that means there's a Thor there. without it, right? Uh that's one yeah. of the things like the Infinity Stones, they have to return it uh, exactly to the point you got it out. So when, when Cap's uh going back in time at the end of the thing, he's carrying Mjolnir with him. Oh because he has to go take that. that back. Ah how did you miss that? It was in his hand. Uh I don't what, I guess I didn't realize met- would you mesmerize he by his eyes? You know, yeah. Joe doesn't always pay attention to every detail. I just was, was looking so... at America's ass. Well, because right. it was Captain Webb. Was I mean? I remember. I noticed he had it, but I, I don't think I knew that he was going to go put it back in. Unless he said that, and I just missed it. <laughs> He's like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to carry this through that through the time portal. You know, just yeah. I, well, this. didn't he use it before he? He was like he using did. it, right? Like I knew you were <laughs> was, was skipping ahead, skipping ahead. Oh yeah, sorry. Well, I'll have to get. Remind me of that, that he's doing that to put it back in the right. Because I just remember him. All I remember about Cap at this moment is him deciding to stay in the past. To, yeah, but when he's gearing up for it. Now, uh, we'll have to get back to that and remind me because yeah. I forgot. Anyway, Thor. Uh, yeah. yeah something else. <laughs> uh, Thor flees the guards chasing him and he jumps back to the present. Uh, oh, he and Thor, he and Rocket both do, and then uh, so jump to Hulk. The four heroes split up, and Hulk pursues the Time Stone, which is in the possession of then Sorcerer Supreme, the Ancient One, Tilda Swinton, and that is not the lady who is in the Eurythmics. Um, that is not Andy Tilda Lennox. No. It's not Andy Lennox. Who, for some reason, I always think that's Andy Lennox. So I always start singing, "Sweet dreams are made of these." Every time she's on, I don't know why. <laughs> Because you're uh, a dumbass. You're the dumbass. Hulk finds the Ancient One covertly assisting in the fight against the alien invaders, and Hulk attempts to take the Time Stone from her by force, but she easily subdues him, and they then discuss why Hulk wants it, and the Ancient One hesitates due to the complexity of time travel. Hulk says that their plan is to return each stone to the exact time they were taken so that they will avoid any paradox. The Ancient One is finally convinced to relinquish the Time Stone when told that her successor, Doctor Strange, Played by Flumberbatch Cunderbone. Uh, <laughs> Benedict <said>, Cumberbatch. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> Flumberstack. This is interesting. There that... is like a bunch of TikToks where people are constantly pronouncing it in a 50. 50- <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's silly fun. But there's, it's interesting that she can see the future that she knows Doctor Strange is destined to be the best of them. And she already knows that. Yeah. She so... doesn't know the exact future that, um, uh, the I guess there's you know 14 million and future alternate futures that she could see, yeah. Uh, so she might not have looked at all of them like Doctor Strange did in the last movie, but um, but well, it's it like also she... interesting to sort of say what the infinity stones what they do, like their existence, I guess, keeps the timeline intact, and uh, according to them, I guess, and I don't know, I don't know how this translates into what. 
uh, Loki does with how the timelines work, but it's like if and you lose one Infinity Stone, and then that's when branching timelines start. And that's uh, I just like the when they come up with interesting pseudoscience to kind of explain how like the mechanics of the world. It's world building stuff. Nerds like that. Nerds. Yeah. Well, once she finds out that Doctor Strange is going to give it up, then she gives it to Hulk, and he jumps back to the present, and then we jump to War Machine and Nebula. They jump back to when Peter Quill, a.k.a. Star-Lord, played by Chris Pratt, who is also Andy Dwyer in Parks and Rec, uh, which which is by far his best work. Uh, He's finding the Power Stone and dancing to his Walkman. Uh, So go back to that moment. It was kind of funny. They knock him out. Uh, (laughs) So he's an idiot. Yeah, so he's yes. an idiot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, once they follow him to the location where he first steals it, unknown to the heroes, however, Nebula's technology is connected to her past self and existence at that time. In the past, Nebula's technology begins to malfunction, and Thanos looks into it. And Thanos' other daughter, Gamora, played by Zoe Saldana, from... Uh, Avatar. Oh, yeah, Avatar. I don't Colombiana. Know. Yeah. Um What's the movie? Special where... Ops Line. <laughs> what, isn't she in the uh, movie? She was in The Losers. She was the, in the Losers. Losers. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think of. The one Art made us watch. Um, and you enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. I would have never watched that otherwise. So thank you, Art, for forcing me outside oh, of my comfort zone. Oh, you're welcome. You're and welcome. Jeff. Forcing me to watch it nude. I, I love you, at, <laughs> at work with you. All right. Keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh yeah um let's see gamora still works with him though is already having doubts about him resisting his efforts to collect the infinity stones he realized that the malfunction is due to the existence of present nebula in this time stream he's able to access present nebula's memories recorded to her cybernetics through past nebula and is able to see all the events up to this point including the hero's current attempt to undo his victory so Thanos allows War Machine and present Nebula to obtain the Power Stone. War Machine jumps back to the present, but before present Nebula can do the same, Thanos deactivates her cybernetics and she collapses. He then sends past Nebula, who's still loyal to him, into the present, posing as present Nebula. Does that all make sense? (laughs) Uh, Yeah. There was times I couldn't remember which Nebula was which. I'm like, what the fuck? And I had to like stop, think, eat a pizza, and then get back <laughs> to the movie. Uh, Hawkeye and Black Widow. They travel to the world where we talked about. Uh, Vormir, the Soul Stone, and agreed greeted by the Guardian Red Skull, played by Ross Marquand from Matrix. Is that right? Uh, no, Hugo Weaving was from the Matrix, who oh. played him in the in the first Captain America movie. Well, this is a different guy playing him? This is a different yeah. guy. That guy does a great impression of Hugo Weaving. He does. Uh, the Red Skull explained... Uh, that one of the two will need to sacrifice their life in exchange for the soul stone. Uh, not exactly, but I, amounts to that, I guess. Yeah. He, he also tells them that once that life is sacrificed, it can never be brought back, even by the Infinity Stones. The pair begin to fight as neither wants the other to die. Hawkeye finally jumps off the ledge of the mountain, but it's caught in midair by Black Widow, and it was. This is very riveting. I didn't. I couldn't remember who's gonna. They were fighting to kill themselves. Yeah, they were kill... fighting over who got to kill themselves. Yeah, that's like, love. They they originally. But if they both kill thought, themselves, like, I think we're both. Gets it? We, yeah, uh, or yeah, one of them has to return with the stone. Yeah, but uh, I like that they're like they think they they both. Oh yeah, we both know who needs to go, right? And then they realize that they're both talking about themselves. Different people. Then, then it becomes a fight. She attaches that grappling hook to Hawkeye, pulls him back up while she plummets to her death. Broken-hearted Hawkeye takes the Soul Stone and returns to the present. And Black Widow's death is never undone. And at this point, he's got to make sure that her death wasn't in vain, right? So he's like, I have to at least right. mm-hmm. try to get this back and have my family back at least, you know. And I, I, I remember hearing the Russo brothers talk about they were going back and forth on which one of them would be the one to die. Yeah. When writing the script. And um and like there's a lot of you know criticism like oh the only female of the original Avengers she's the one who dies yeah but at the same time apparently like the the call they 
made. I I can't remember who, but like one of their script supervisors or somebody, uh, um, she read their draft and she was like of of Clint being the one to die, and she was yeah. like, "Don't you take this away from her? Don't you take this away from her? This is what she needs to do." So I guess like they were convinced because one of their uh, the people they work with was very adamant that she yeah because be it one. wasn't a matter of killing her off it was a matter of giving her some redemption she wanted and needed yeah and the yeah. character gets at least she does some final thing to save somebody uh, after like and she's done a she's lot of not because she can't really be I mean her her happiness would be being with Hulk which can't happen like they've explained <laughs> point, so many times they can't but, be together yeah. i don't know right? if that's her happiness anymore it isn't they're not still in love because he not has really. he gives her that they, whole speech about how we can't be together you know she's like we can be it's together. been years i think her capacity to get over it is there she's fine okay but she doesn't but, but she doesn't have anybody else then apparently right because does she flirt no, with she anybody else can't not want to date anyone is that what you're saying joe well i mean she doesn't have family her family's all dead Clint is have... her family. His family is her family. Well, yeah, but one of them's got to die. So if 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 he's dead too, then she's got no. Sacrificing for Except... her family, which and is then him. we find out. Yeah, for yeah, the but most if part, he... until we find out I'm in the Black Widow like... movie that she she has saying... other family. What I'm saying is like if, that's if, true. If she decides let Clinton die, let me live. Yeah, Clint's Clint's family comes back, and then Natasha can like hang out with them. But it's like <laughs> no, she her family's not coming back, right? Like her family's way gone. This is her well, family. Well, right as now? Andy just noted, we find out later more. But oh, okay. Every, then and, I don't know. And if you think about it, when Clint shows up, like just that room, when there's like, where's Natasha? Like, oh, yeah. That, like, that, oh, that's that heartbreaking. Was like, heartbreaking. That was like Hartfield's yeah. number one in this movie. Yeah. Right. Oh, and there's the there's the bit before when the Red Skull is greeting them and and tells them who their father, like Clint, son of whoever, and Natasha, son of Ivan, and uh clint was like what you think he knows stuff just because he knows who your father is and she was like i didn't so mm-hmm. like she didn't know who her real father was right and i oh, think oh, I and if that. and if i remember the black widow movie right it, uh, like the person that turns out to be her real father is a piece of shit uh like one of her worst enemies a pos uh, yeah so yeah it's... okay yeah anyway i mean i definitely wish clint would have died because uh I like you're Black a clint hater i am uh and but your love with scarlett johansson well i just like her she's great mm. iron man captain america you more than like her <laughs> okay <laughs> i really you yeah. like her more than a friend yeah i just think she's fun and kick ass and all that <laughs> and makes a great peanut butter and jelly yeah iron, iron man captain america and ant-man uh their whole thing they uh, the pair wait until loki is defeated and the heroes have possession of the mind and space stones uh as the heroes and shield clear out of the area past tony stark takes possession of the space stone and undercover hydra agents including crossbones frank grillo uh <laughs> they take possession of the mind stone and what's frank grillo from anything do we know him from anything uh, he's he was in the uh, other Captain stuff. America movies. Yeah, I feel. I mean, besides being in these Marvel he's movies, he's in. Uh, I feel like I know him from something. He's in the Purge. Movie. He's in Purge. No, he's I only saw him being. Uh, what else? <laughs> no, stupid joke. Anyway, they take possession of the uh of the Mind Stone. Iron Man, Ant Man go after the Space Stone, while Cap goes after the Mind Stone. Uh, and this uh, man, this part. Got me depressed because I was like, ah, oh, now I can't. I'm all over the place. I can't remember what movie this happened and when this happened and all this. And so I guess it's supposed <laughs> to be confusing. But Cap enters an elevator with the Hydra agents and the Mind Stone, um, which calls him. back to the elevator fight sequence from Captain America, uh, the the Winter Soldier. Right, but it's not the same elevator ride, right? No. It's, it's not the same elevator, elevator right, but it's the same. It just type happens of thing. like the same kind of people. Yeah, you know, a shit ton of secret Hydra agents that are yeah. trying to make off with the the thing. Well, I thought this was brilliant. How he, yeah. he you know, it looks like a fight's about to ensue. They're like, "Oh shit, Cap's here!" And then he he knows they're all traitors and says, "Hail Hydra!" to him, thinking that 
convincing them he's on their side. It's like, oh, shit. And I love yeah, that this so is smart. also, you know, this is like little comic booky call out, too, because, you know, there's been like the Secret Empire uh, series. And then there was a few years ago the thing where you actually had in the pages of the comics, Cap screaming, Hail Hydra. So, yeah, there was, a, there was an evil Cap storyline where he was actually a, a Hydra agent in the. So this sort of calls back to that for nerds, uh, or foretells of it because I yeah, think it came later. Yeah, it came after. Oh, it came after. Anyway, that was just a cool bit where he's like, and the, the surprise on their faces when they're like, "Oh my god, this guy! Like the the biggest patriot in the world is like part of Hydra." They're like, "Oh, cool!" They give him give him the mind stone. He's about to get away when he's encountered by his past self, and <laughs> and this funny bit they fight with his past self. Uh, believing present Captain America to be Loki in disguise. And I love when he's like, I can do this all day. I was like, I know, believe me, I know. You know that, <laughs> he's heard that line before. He's tired of hearing his own line said to him. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> uh, present Cap wins the battle when he distracts his past self by telling him that Bucky Barnes, a.k.a. the Winter Soldier, is still alive. Which calls back to, you know, when he found out the first time, like he got paralyzed and didn't... Uh, didn't clock the bomb that fucking Frank Grillo crossbones had on him that eventually this was civil war actually. Yeah. See, um, it's all over the place. So, you know, yeah. what's this from and when did that happen? And this happened like, somewhere. Cause when he hears about Bucky, he freezes up and then Scarlet witch tries to get rid of the bomb and it blows up the Wakandan embassy there. And uh, it becomes a huge thing um, about the dangers of operating as Avengers and stuff. So he knew his own weaknesses and that's, pretty cool bucky and it is america's ass as he sucks uh as ant-man called it it is america's ass yeah <laughs> uh following past tony past thor and a captured past loki to the lobby of the building ant-man and iron man watch as the heroes are confronted by past shield director and undercover hydra agent alexander pierce played by robert redford Mm-hmm. Uh, Pierce demands the suitcase containing the space stone. So they get they had to get all these actors back. So and that's yeah. still always blows my mind. It's like all these unbelievable actors, Renee Russo, just all in tiny bits in this movie. All the people that I hope they all got. I'm sure they all got paid. Yeah, uh, that's why I mean, they they're all. Trust me, <laughs> they're not taking these roles for free. That's true. <laughs> no, but I mean, like. I, yeah, I almost wonder they did such a good job of making them look exactly like did they use footage from the original movie sometimes for some of these shots? But I guess you can't really because all you got to do is put them in the right costumes. Yeah. And in the right context. And have make, someone there. There is a job in Hollywood called continuity. Yeah, so that's true. Right. On set. That's what you and should they make be, sure DJ. things line up. Yeah, you should I be a continuity. You could do that. Uh, Anyway, uh, Pierce demands a suitcase containing the space stone. Ant-Man crawls into past Tony's heart monitor and detaches it, causing past Tony to go into cardiac arrest and cause pandemonium to ensue. Uh, and pa- so that's what I was confused because, like, current current Tony is telling Ant-Man to do this to past Tony, right? Yes, because he knows exactly how to cause the commotion and distraction so they can make off with the, mm-hmm. the Tesseract. But does current tony know that past tony will survive that he i mean one we we learn it doesn't necessarily matter because it'll create a branching timeline and you can't right. change your okay. own past right yeah 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 but gotcha. uh I forget that bit. he also knows um he probably knows it, this will just stun him for a bit and he'll figure something out because he'll figure he'll out what happened because uh, yeah. he's got you know the what's her nuts in his head oh, past things. thor eventually yeah, yeah. revives him right with his yeah, with he didn't know that would work it's even. Electricity. But he does. Right? Yeah. Because he's a hero. Thor is a hero and he saves Tony Stark's life. In the pandemonium, President Iron Man takes the case with the space stone and goes to the exit when he's knocked into too many stairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, past Hulk knocks and comes banging out of the door and then Iron Man. Because they him. didn't got him in the elevator. They would they had to walk the down elevator. all the stairs. <laughs> yeah. And yell about the stairs. And so because of that, the suitcase flies out of the present Iron Man's hands and lands right next to Loki, who grabs it and uses it to escape, and it's gone. Uh, and is that where the Loki series starts? Yep. No? 
Oh, it he is? Okay. grabs a Tesseract and takes off and becomes a yeah. variant. And, and that, that starts is, the Loki show. That's right. Yeah, Loki follows up on that. Okay. Because I think when we watched, or when, I don't know if we talked about it on here, when we watched the Loki show, I didn't remember, I hadn't seen this yet, <clears throat> I think, so I didn't have any fucking idea of what was going on. <laughs> But so now I got to rewatch Loki because now it makes sense to me. Anyway, the yep. trio the trio realized the only option is to go even further back in time to get the space stone, but doing so will result in them being unable to return to the present because they only have so many uh, blips or whatever they're called. Uh, they decided to go back to when Hank Pym was still working for Shield, so they can both get both the space stone and more Pym particles. They sent Ant Man to the present with the Mind Stone, and then Iron Man and Cap go back in time again. Uh, and then we get to the seventies. We get our final Stan Lee cameo ever, where he drives a car in hippie gear and yells out, "Make peace, not war." Uh, and Captain America, war. oh, make love, not war, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the that's the line. Yeah, this this guy on this website, uh, I should give a shout out back to him, uh, Evan B from Spoilers dot com. I think is the website. Um, make love, not war. Captain America and Iron Man infiltrate a shield base and split up Tony to get the space stone and Steve to get the pim particles. And Steve successfully distracts Hank and takes some pim particles. And that's what we see Hank with the long hair on his although mission. He doesn't, although uh, Shirley from Community uh, has some suspicions. <laughs> yes, the, and is this does this complete our community? I don't cameos? know if it completes. Uh, I don't remember. I mean, technically, so Jeff Winger Chang. was in uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, but I don't think he was in the MCU movies. But we had Chang was earlier. He was yeah. the guy uh, watching the the store with the when the rat hit the uh, the button on the van. Yeah, we had Danny Pudi. Uh, yeah, Danny Pudi was in uh, Winter Soldier, I believe. Um, and Trump, no, it was Civil War. Iron it was Man. Civil War. No. No, it was Winter Soldier. Anyway, um, on his mission, he yeah. glimpses the love of his life, Peggy Carter, and he's just standing there in the in that window. And I keep thinking she's going to see him, Haley Atwell, but he does not approach her. And Tony finds a space stone in his father's office before he leaves. His father, Howard John Slattery, runs into him, and the two have a bonding moment. Uh, the heroes reunite and return to the present. I like that whole past. You know, Tony yeah. talking to his dad yeah. like that. Movie yeah, it's really a way to to sweet. bring that full circle because so much of like the previous was how cold his father was to him and how yep. and, like he's kind of emotionally unavailable all the time. Yep, and how um, happy he is when he finds out his what how his dad feels about him and mm-hmm. that he loves him and would do everything for him already. It's a sweet moment there. Anyway, having successfully retrieved all the stones, Iron Man creates a gauntlet to place them in. With the stones united, the heroes realize that using the Infinity Stones will subject the user to severe radiation. So Hulk eventually gets to use the gauntlet as he is the sturdiest of the heroes and also was created through radiation. So he, he thinks he's going to be the best to survive it. Like specifically it gamma radiation. Yeah, gamma. Yeah, he's like, I'm made to do this. Yep. Yeah, I'm made, I'm made of gamma, basically. Uh, meanwhile, with all the other heroes occupied with the Infinity Stones, past Nebula, activates the time machine and uses it to pull past Thanos' warships into the present and doing so destroys the time machine. Yeah, like, like they have the moment he Hulk does the snap. Yep. He does uh, a snap. It, he it, snaps it his fingers. his arm, it fucks him up, but then like the they bring up the the protocol like the windows come up, the the blast shields come up and trees are there and you notice life is there because I guess all living things included trees and Oh, such. yeah, they came back. Yeah. So yeah. Like, oh, I think it worked. And, Effort and then... greatly withers a Hulk <laughs> and depletes the strength. Their efforts work, but as soon as they begin to celebrate, Thanos' warships open fire on the Avengers base and utterly destroy it. Like, the second they're like, oh, it worked, yay! <laughs> like, Boom, tell me, oh, giant, there's a missile. Now a giant battle. Mm-hmm. Oh, and all the heroes manage to, manage to survive. Thanos orders past Nebula to find the Infinity Stones while he waits for the heroes to emerge from the rubble. And this is... A, and, yeah, this is a yeah. hard moment to watch. Yeah. Yeah. This is a whole, like the whole sequence of, you know, Rocket can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Yeah. He's, uh, and then l- later when they're like the water's filling up and they're about to drown and he's like losing it. 
<laughs> yeah. like Rocket is absolutely like I don't think we've seen Rocket this panicked ever. Yeah, yeah. What is no, it? no, but yeah. it's it's understandable panic. This movie, yeah. I will note, this movie was hard for me to watch. Yep. It took yeah. me a long time to watch. It's taking me after what rewatching bites. Yeah, yeah. Because we've decided we're gonna hold off here at this moment where everybody's buried in rubble, uh, uh, and then we're gonna. We're gonna pick up. We're leaving on suspense, Joe. Yeah, suspense. this I'm a suspenseful moment where everybody's buried. Um and uh yeah. to lie. Yep. Because I think Pascamora frees Nebula and they go off to aid the heroes, but everybody's buried in this rubble and we don't know what's gonna happen next. Uh so we'll just pick up in the buried rubble scene Man. and finish. Uh, end game on our hundredth episode. Our hundredth episode. So please, hundred. Yeah, come back, folks, to listen to our hundredth episode when we. I mean, crazy shit's gonna happen. We're all gonna be. Maybe we'll be in person recording it. Maybe we'll all be, eh, you know, in a hot tub. <laughs> no, we are not all going to be in a hot tub. We're not. <laughs> Art and I might be. Art and you might be. I will and be and par for the course. It'll be a time machine. Hot tub time Hot machine. Hot tub time machine. For All right, you episode. do that. I'll be here. <laughs> That'll be one of the summer break movies we have to watch, too. We should see <laughs> if we can get John Cusack to be on the next episode. Uh, I'm sure he's now. dying to talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> we should get a guest. We should get um, Hunter Brain. He, he, uh, he said he wanted to be a guest uh, when we start doing Star Wars stuff. Yeah, he wants to be on the Star Wars ones, yeah. So yeah. Okay. Anyway, everybody's exhausted here. TBJ's got some sleep to get. I got to get some sleep because I got to take an early plane in the morning. Uh, on train, on a jet plane. Art's got to go no, do no, the worm. I'll be <laughs> back again. Older style for those who watch WWE. <laughs> Wait, is doing the worm a euphemism for taking a dump? Ooh, uh, it could be. First off, um, <laughs> if you know me, you know I don't mess around with you. With, he doesn't with, put his phone in the potty, right? <laughs> and I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not really big on fecal humor. Okay, I'm not okay. big on fecal humor. <laughs> you can talk about a thousand inappropriate things, apparently, but that. Fecal matter is off limits. No fecal matter. <laughs> All right, fecal doesn't matter. Thank you for listening to the Nerd School podcast. They say I can't rap about the president no more, but evidently they don't see we in the streets still poor. Still more incarceration of my kids by the prisons and people thinking this election to end in racism. Proud of a pessimism, glad to see Obama, but don't expect me not to speak out when I still see problems, Mr. Officer. Now they POTUS look like me, you don't think again we're seeing brothers rolling down the street. Every Martin Luther King on his American dream. Still a Rodney BNB and screaming, fuck the police. Me, I'm running through the passage, trying to get away from master. But the dogs is on my ass, I gotta move a little faster. Can't fast for Caucasian, but I got a couple papers from the plantation saying I graduated. Congratulations, cool beans, but to most school me. Trying to dodge STDs, living off government cheese Trust the government, please Not even if it was me Sitting in the Oval Office as Commander-in-Chief Trying to give us us free But there's a nigga in my ear saying You got it, Superman, you ought to keep it here Get this distinctly clear, I'm all about jetting Raps Kunta Kinte without the half-stepping A new chapter, back with new lessons After that, the final exam, any questions? Podcastnetwork.com. Excelsior.